Sorry we're running just a bit late. Hey Chuck, do you mind joining us for a second? You can't escape just yet. I'll go ahead and call this March 6, 2017 meeting of the Whitefish City Council to order and considering this is Chuck Stern's last meeting with the City Council, I would like to ask Chuck to lead us in the pledge this evening. Although not uh, noted as a presentation this evening, we do have um, a very important presentation uh, to make, and that's to congratulate uh, Chuck Stearns and thank him for his um, over 33 years of dedicated uh, service to municipal government in the states of Montana and Colorado. As you all know, Chuck stepped down just a few weeks ago um, as city manager, but he's still our former city manager until Thursday. Um, Many of you probably don't know much about Chuck's background, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a little bit, little bit of story to you. Uh, Chuck received his undergraduate degree in finance and small business from the University of Colorado in Boulder and went to receive his master's in public administration from the University of Montana. After serving as store manager for Kalispell Logging and Welding from 1980 to 1982, Chuck headed south and served as the fiscal analyst for the city of Missoula from 1984 to 1987. He then went on to serve as the finance director and city clerk for Missoula from 1987 to 1994. Chuck continued migrating south and finally left Montana to serve as the town manager for the town of Mount Crested Butte in Colorado, where he served in that capacity from 1995 through 2004. Chuck ended his career in Colorado in the town of Georgetown, where he served as town administrator from 2004 through 2008. Rumor has it while in those posts, it wouldn't be uncommon to see Chuck driving a snowplow or issuing parking citations during his spare time. <laughs> Chuck was one of five finalists who applied for the city manager position in Whitefish in 2008. And I personally recall meeting Chuck at the public meet and greet, which at the time was held at the former Crush Wine Bar. When I asked Chuck if he had ever skied at Big Mountain, he quickly pulled out his season pass from I believe the early 1980s, smiling. And I knew at that time that Chuck would be a great fit for Whitefish. He quickly rose to the top of the candidate pool and was offered an accept the position, of course, only after conferring with Rita, who gladly indicated, yes, I will join you in Whitefish. So thanks Rita for allowing us to have Chuck these past eight or nine years. Chuck landed in Whitefish at a rather difficult time. Former finance director Mike Eve had passed away from a courageous fight with cancer, so Chuck had to assume the duties of both city manager as well as our finance director for many months. A monumental undertaking, particularly as the Great Recession, as Chuck refers to it as, set in. Together with the help of his directors, staff, and council, Chuck was able to balance the budget in very difficult times while still moving forward multiple capital improvement projects and urban infrastructure projects, including the reconstruction of Central Avenue using resort tax revenues. Together with Karen Hilding and John Wilson, Chuck helped secure a $3 million Tiger Grant Award from the Federal Highway Administration for the reconstruction of US Highway 93 through downtown Whitefish. Chuck was instrumental in forming the Whitefish Community Library and assisted the Board of Trustees in transitioning from a county-managed facility to a full-fledged city-owned and operated community library. Under Chuck's leadership, the city moved forward with many long-range planning efforts, including the Depot Park Master Plan, the US Highway 93 West Corridor Study, and the soon-to-be-adopted Wisconsin Avenue Corridor Study. One particular project that, of course, is dear to this council and that I'll always credit Chuck for is his work on the Haskell Basin Conservation Easement Project. When I was approached by the Trust for Public Land and informed that the city had about 18 months to come up with $7 million in public funding, of course, the first door I knocked on was Chuck's to see if this was even a reality. Chuck went to work and developed a well thought out creative funding mechanism to close the funding gap that allowed the council and our community to move the Haskell Basin project over the finish line. And of course, the new city hall and parking structure 
And Chuck, you just have to promise that you'll attend the, the groundbreaking ceremony if you're in town. I know you might be on a bike trip, though. But we'll think of you when we, when we cut the ribbon. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I think everyone here gets the point. Chuck, you will be missed, but we know where we will find you, on the slopes of big mountains in the winters, catching chair four at 9 a.m. at the farmer's market on Tuesdays in the summer, on Friday at 5.05, filling your growler at Great Northern Brewing Company, <laughs> or on one of, your, one of your many planned bicycle tours. We wish you and Rita health, prosperity, and many laughs together. On behalf of the city council, staff, and the community, thank you very much for your service to Whitefish. It's certainly been an honor for all of us serving by your side. Congratulations. We do have a, a memorial plaque in recognition of Chuck's 33 years of service, and I know there's former counselors and many employees that have worked with Chuck here tonight, and I've asked Heidi with the Whitefish Pilot to please take a photo um, of us uh, along with Chuck as we present the plaque this evening. We'll move on to what will be item 3A of the meeting. If I can find my paperwork. Oops. And I can't. This is going to be a pro mayoral proclamation um, acknowledging the National Retired Educators Day. I forgot to mention that uh, Richard Hildner's at, attending a separate event, but uh, this one's for him and all the other retired teachers out there. Uh, whereas Montana educators have been instrumental in the creation and implementation of an outstanding education system in our state, and whereas educators have touched the lives of thousands of students in schools around the state of Montana, and whereas the challenges of educating, which are as va variable as the talents and personalities of the students, require extraordinary patience and sensitivity, and whereas every student becomes a better human being and a more responsible citizen because of the dedication and efforts of teachers, administrators, and all other school personnel, and whereas retired educators continue to support public ed education through volunteering and in supporting schools and communities across the state 
using their expertise and energy in a wide variety of ways. And therefore I, John Molfeld, mayor of Whitefish, Montana, do hereby proclaim Thursday, March 9th, 2017 to be Montana retired educator today, day, excuse me, and just congratulations to all of our retired teachers here in Whitefish and the uh, greater Flathead Valley. Mike, I think you're up. We'll move on to item 3B, which is an update from Mike Cronquist, our owner's representative on our city hall and parking structure construction project. They're working on the canopies now for the, the parking structure side of it. The brickwork is done, completed on City Hall. The glazing, the storefronts, uh, the exterior storefronts are in and in, pla or in place, of course. The uh, only thing that's not installed yet, and that will be one of the last things, is the entry doors. Uh, we uh, don't really want to get those damaged. They're, those, they're wooden uh, assembly. The uh, <clears throat> the painting is continuing inside mostly. It's just touch up, trim, things like window sills, stain work, final stain, and, and the like. The, the wainscoting, the paneling, all the finished carpenter, carpentry is underway. Uh, we're getting very close to being finished in the council chambers. And in the. Uh, and in the, um, I think she wants me to wait a minute. Sorry. I can continue. I'll okay. continue. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, the cabinetry is being set in the break areas and in the uh, conference rooms on the second floor. Cabinet, the cabinets and countertops and things are being placed in the admin areas on the first floor. Some of the cabinetry is in place there. As we uh, work through this, they will be putting more and more of the owner furnished office equipment in place uh, as it comes in and becomes available and space becomes available to put it in. The tile on the second floor and second floor of restrooms is complete. Some of the fixtures in the restrooms are being set as, as uh, tile and, and uh, finish work is, is completed. The, uh, Tile, they're working on tile uh, as of today in the downstairs restrooms. That should be done by the end of this week. They're installing lights, the side lights along the office doors. They are completed on the, uh, on the second floor and they're working on those this morning in, uh, on the first floor. That should also be completed by the end of the week. The electrical is continuing. The electricians are, are setting fixtures in the drop ceilings. They're uh, uh, <coughs> terminating, hooking up the control systems, the things that control the lights and so forth. The mechanical work is progressing towards the commissioning effort. They're getting the final wiring, the final hookups, the final checks, all that stuff in place so they can uh, actually do a test fire on the boilers. And that is tentatively planned for the end of this week or the first of next week. Then it will be helter-skelter, getting all the bits and pieces and operations gear in place in order to start the commissioning activity. While that's going on, they'll continue working on uh, finishing the brickwork on the parking structure. The CMU work in the parking structure is all complete with the exception of the wall between the retail space and the parking structure. That is started and that will be uh, for the most part done this week. The elevators are, have, are being shipped. They are supposed to arrive Monday or Tuesday. The crews will be on site to start installing those. They will start with the Southwest elevator 
shaft and then we worked to the northeast. Uh, <clears throat> the, like I said, the brickwork will continue until it's done along, uh, along Baker Street. It's at a, probably about the 75% uh, completion now on, on the parking structure, or on that, on the, sorry, on that Baker Avenue face. They scaffolded today on the northeast corner of the parking structure to begin the oversized brickwork that wraps the alley, and then they will continue the brickwork along from the, from the east, northeast corner inward to the west. Um, I guess that's uh, where we're headed. The canopies, uh, when the weather gets a little bit better, we'll start putting the uh, decking, the roofing, uh, and all the, all the final pieces on the canopies. Kind of waiting on the weather clear a little bit so they put them up and paint them and be done with them all at once. Landscaping is another weather contingent item. I expect that to start probably the next two to three, four weeks, something on that order. We uh, didn't have any uh, real communications to the public this, this period. We've kind of been waiting for things to settle down and the flurry to sort of stop and some of the dust to settle. And so that uh, Heidi and I can walk about, take some pictures and, and get a ride up into the pilot. Um, what else have we got going on? It's pretty much it. We're working towards, uh, like I said, just finishing. We, uh, I did get around and talk to the business owners about restricting that alleyway a little bit. That alleyway, by the way, will only be restricted for about two weeks and it, you can still get in and out of there. It's not closed off. It's just uh, something that's a little bit inconvenient. We have had no contract activities for this period. And at this point in this day, I, I have no uh, immediate concerns. Questions, Mr. Mayor? Thanks, Mike. Any questions for Mike? Jen? Just a quick one. Um, the precast damage that was done that we spoke of a couple of months ago on that um, southeast corner of City Hall, have they attempted to no, repair that? Not yet. Uh, they're waiting on weather. That's a weather uh, issue, too. So okay. as soon as it gets warm enough and nice enough, they'll fix that. Okay. Further questions? Not seeing any. Thanks, Mike. Okay, thank Appreciate you. the update. We'll move on to item four, which is communications from the public. Uh, time set aside for folks to comment on items that are either on the agenda but not advertised for a public hearing or anything you'd like to bring to the council's attention. And as John knows, just for the record, name and address, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councilman. Uh, my name is John Anderson. I live at M76A Creekwood Drive. Um, I'm here tonight to congratulate Chuck Stearns. Um, I, uh, uh, a lot of people get a bad, give government a bad rap nowadays. Um, they say it doesn't work, but in some places it does work. And this is one of those towns where it absolutely does work. And it works because of the people within government and Chuck Stearns uh, and all of you staff members around the table um, are absolutely a part of it. Uh, I remember the first council meeting uh, we had, it was one of the more contentious ones we had in, in the term that I was up here. And they happened to be the very first one. Didn't know Chuck from Adam off Ox. Didn't know what he could do. And I didn't intend to test his abilities that night, but I think I did anyway. Um, you might recall that was when the uh, school district asked us for a sizable donation for completing the high school. And uh, after I started looking at the issue, I asked Chuck a couple of questions. I asked him to calculate a few things. And then the hearing went on. And I asked him again to calculate a few things a different way. And then I asked him again another question. And he did this for an hour and a half. The hearing was an hour and a half. And it wasn't just me peppering him with questions. It was the rest of the council. And every question he nailed. He gave us good information that we could rely on. He was using a calculator at his table to do that. So. Uh, Chuck Stearns, a remarkable government employee that I think if, uh, if folks would model themselves after his, his work ethic, his integrity, his impartiality, uh, and his outright competence, I think, uh, I think Whitefish and the rest of this country would be in a, be in a great place. So Chuck, congratulations on a great career. First one. Thanks, John. 
Further public comment tonight? Not seeing any, we'll stay with the public. Any volunteer board reports from the audience? How about the council? Not seeing any, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Any changes or addition, additions to the February 21st meeting minutes or can I have a motion for approval? Move to approve the consent agenda. A second. Motion was seconded by Councillor Franson. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed like sign and that passes unanimously. Michelle, which brings us on to our public hearings this evening, uh, which we do have five. We'll be starting with ordinance 17 dash four, and this is an or ordinance rezoning approximately 10 acres of land comprised of 13 parcels in the Ramsey Avenue right of way located in section 26, township 31 North, range 22 West, and section 35, township 31 North, range 22 West in Flathead County, Montana from County R4 to Whitefish WR2 and adopting findings with respect to such rezone on a first hearing. Good yeah. evening, Mayor and Council. Um, as you recall, on uh, January 17th, you guys um, did a resolution to annex a number of properties around the city that were wholly surrounded and or connected to water and sewer. Um, because those properties previously had a county zoning, Whitefish now has to um, rezone them to a comparable Whitefish zoning district so that we can then administer planning and zoning on those properties. Um, the first of those as John mentioned, is on uh, the Ramsey Avenue area, um, about 10 acres of properties there. Um, they were previously zoned County R4, and we're rezoning back to what they had been when they were in our jurisdiction, which is WR2. Um, those properties are at 400, 408, 512, 520, 528, 539, and 544 Ramsey, as well as 323, 331, 339, 341, and 345 Fraser Avenue. Um, currently a mix of developed residential uses and vacant lands. Um, in order to change the zoning, we have to review the several findings of fact under state law um, that they were, this rezone was made in accordance with the growth policy, and which it is, um, that it um, will secure safety from fire, panic, and other dangers, which it does, promotes public health, safety, and general welfare, um, which it does, facilitates adequate provision of transportation, water, sewerage, schools, parks, and other public requirements. Um, which it does, it provides a reasonable provision of adequate light and air, uh, has no effect on motorized and non-motorized transportation systems, promotes compatible urban growth, and gives consideration to the character of the district and the suitability of the particular uses, um, which it does, conserves the value of buildings, and encourages the most appropriate use of land throughout the jurisdiction, since we're going back to existing zoning that we had before. It does that, um, and it also, um, considers the historical and established use patterns, including trends when making the decision. Staff recommended approval to the Whitefish Planning Board um, on February 16th. The Planning Board reviewed that. Um, there was no public comment at the meeting and the Whitefish Planning Board unanimously recommended approval. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, Dave. Any questions for Dave? Not seeing any, we did advertise for a public hearing on what will be our own ordinance 17-4 and we'll hold that public hearing now. Any public testimony on this item? Any public testimony? We'll go ahead and close the public hearing and turn it back to the council. Frank. I would move to approve ordinance 1704, uh, an ordinance of, uh, rezoning approximately 10 acres of land uh, in the Ramsey area. Is there a second to the motion? A second. Seconded by Councillor Franson. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that passes unanimously. Michelle. And we'll move on to item 7B, which is 17 5, an ordinance rezoning approximately 0 0.832 acres of land located at 6356 Highway 93 South in Flathead County, Montana, from County B2A, which is their secondary business district to our own Whitefish WB2, which is our secondary business district, and adopting findings with respect to such rezone on a first reading. Dave. So this particular parcel uh, is the parking lot at Pizza Hut. Um, it was, for whatever reason, never annexed into the city. Um, it is now annexed into the city. Um, so we're changing the zoning from the county B2A secondary business to Whitefish B2 secondary business district. And um, once again, we have to review it according to 
The findings according to the state law, and it is the rezone is made according to the growth policy. Uh, it secures from safety of fire, panic, and other dangers, promotes public health, public safety, general welfare, facilitates adequate transportation, water, sewers, schools, parks, and other public requirements, provides adequate light and air, um, has no effect on motorized and non-motorized transportation systems, promotes compatible urban growth, uh, considers the character of the district and its particular suitability, particular uses, it conserves the value of buildings, encourages the most appropriate use of land throughout the jurisdictional area, and historical use patterns were considered in making this uh, rezone request. Staff did recommend approval. There was a hearing before the planning board on February 16th. There was no public comment. Uh, the planning board unanimously recommended approval. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Dave? Not seeing any. We did advertise for a public hearing on what will be Ordinance 17 5. Any public testimony tonight? Public testimony? I will go ahead and close the public hearing and move it back to council. Frank. I'll move to approve Ordinance uh, 1705, an ordinance rezoning approximately 0 0.832 acres of land located at uh, 6356 Highway, Highway 93 South. I'll second. Seconded by Councillor Franson. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign. And that, again, is unanimous. Michelle. We'll move on to item. 7C, which will be Ordinance 17-6 now, rezoning approximately 0.827 acres of land located at 1210 O'Brien Avenue and O'Brien Avenue right-of-way in Section 1, Township 30 North Range 22 West, and Section 36, 36 excuse me, Township 31 North Range 22 West in Flathead County, Montana, from County R4, their two-family residential district, to our own Whitefish WR2, which is our two-family residential district, in adopting findings with respect to such rezone on a first reading. Dave, again. So this particular property um, is along O'Brien Avenue next to O'Brien Bluffs. It was not part of the original O'Brien Bluffs subdivision. Um, for whatever reason, uh, it was never annexed into the city. Um, was current or previously County R4. However, it was before that it was R2, and we had jurisdiction. We are proposing to change the zoning back to WR2, which is the appropriate um, zoning for that district. Um, we reviewed um, the rezone according to the state law under findings of fact. Um, this rezone is made according to the provisions of our growth policy and the future land use map therein. Uh, it does secure from fire, panic, and other dangers because we do have uh, Whitefish Police and Fire that would now respond being in city limits. Uh, promotes public health, safety, and general welfare, facilitates adequate provision of transportation, water, sewage, schools, parks, and other public requirements, gives a reasonable provision of adequate light and air, has no effect on motorized or non-motorized transportation systems, promotes compatible urban growth, um, considers the character of the district and sustainability of the particular uses therein, uh, conserves the value of buildings, and encourages the most appropriate use of land throughout the jurisdictional area. And we did consider the historical use patterns um, because it was annexed into the city, it does need a zoning change. We did recommend approval. There was a public hearing on February 16th. One member of the public did speak at that, the property owner, Pete Costain. He um, did petition the planning board to consider changing his zoning to a commercial zoning that would be more um, compatible with adjacent um, commercial zoning that's directly to the east of his property. Uh, the planning board declined to do that. Uh, they did recommend approval of the staff report and the findings therein to, to rezone the property to WR2. Thanks, Dave. Any questions for Dave? There was also a letter that he sent that uh, you guys should have also had as part of the packet. Thanks, Dave. Not seeing any questions, I will go ahead and open the public hearing for what will be Ordinance 17-6. Public comment, please. <coughs> Linda. You can go ahead, okay. yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm assuming, and I just heard that you all received the letter that I sent you with the map. Uh, historically, 1210 O'Brien Avenue has been brought up in city council meetings more times than I care to think about. Due to developments in 2006 and 2007, and as part of the donut, uh, attending meetings for the donut, attending meetings in Kalispell, I am over this. <laughs> um, uh, 
During, uh, now after 10 years of construction on both the right and the left of 1210 O'Brien, I will ask you again to respectfully please quit treating my home as a puzzle piece that does not fit. Please stop and have a discussion on what to do with the residents that the city placed in a business park instead of just rubber stamping the WR2 zoning. And then in reference to the February 9th zone change staff report, I'd like to address um, item, a couple of items here. Uh, so when it comes to item F, effective motorized and non-motorized transportation systems, I'm not sure if this is the right time, but these are things I brought up as a concern in 2006 and 2007, but everything went through as the developer wanted, and these have been problems that we've had since then. So on O'Brien Avenue, we've had four trees that were hit and a rollover on that section of, between my house and the police department, um, which I don't think too many people know about. Um, not all of them were reported because they're drunk people cutting through. Um, there has also been a significant problem with uh, traffic flow on that section of street, mainly during the um, construction phases, but also now with the snow. That section of road on O'Brien does not have no parking like the wave does on one side or the other. And so we have construction vehicles on one side and then people parking for the new business park on the other side. So there's a single lane to travel through mm -hmm. um, and that needs to be addressed. As well as I'm surprised the fire department hasn't addressed that as well. Um, related to adequate light and air, I'm gonna add noise to that. Because of my house is in a business park, um, with the increasing development of O'Brien Bluffs, there is um, industrial snow removal. And so all night long, I've kept awake with the beep, beep, beep of snow <coughs> removal. And that was not something the city ever considered. Um, related to number H, the consideration to the character of the district, in particular, suitability for particular uses. Um, our lot is divided by residential and business, and the city chose not to include us in the residential, although I begged to be included in the residential. We were pushed into the business park, wholly surrounded by backyards, um, even though the mission statement of the, um, one of the, I don't know what document it was, but it was a document in 2006 that said, you know, they came and interviewed everybody and said, what do you want to see done? Mission statement of that was to incorporate old neighborhoods into new neighborhoods, and I was told in 2006 and 7 that that was not something you could enforce. So I was not included in the development of O'Brien Bluffs. On J, um, it says the proposed zone to WR2 would encourage the most appropriate use of land as it would be the most similar to adjacent properties. Because I look into the backyards of all the residents that surround me, my primary view is into the business park. So again, I don't think that that's an, um, Appropriate zoning. The historical use will be considered under K, equally weighed with the uh, will be you'll you'll weigh the historical use pattern of the property as well as recent changes. And I feel like you're ignoring the recent changes to the neighborhood um, again because it's a business park. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Appreciate the comments. Further public comment tonight on this item? Not seeing any, I'll close, close the public hearing and turn it back to council for a motion or discussion. Frank. I'm gonna to move to approve this, but I, my, I wanna take into account some of Linda's concerns. David, have we, is there a reason that we have not been able to address or at least consider some of these issues over the years i mean well i mean that, obviously been going on a long time i mean that property when we did our growth policy we had a designation of suburban residential or urban in that area residential future land use that applies to that property and so and the the existing zoning had been r2 um i think it currently has a residential use on it um, it is in a transitional area between a couple of different places and in the future um you know, if we do a more detailed study of that area, we might look at that. But right, you know, the, the, the zoning matches the future land use of our growth policy, so. And 
just Linda, so you know, at any point, if you want to change the zoning on that, you can come to the city with a proposal to I change it. That's what we're doing right now, right? No, we're simply changing the zone. We're converting what you would currently have now from county zoning to city zoning that's the exact equivalent. That's what's being done now. We're not changing your use pattern or what the use is on the property from what it has been historically to something new. It's going from a county construction to a city construction, same use. Right, but I could have had the opportunity at the county to change my zoning to a more appropriate zoning, but I just am so sick of going to these meetings. And when, it's a big can of worms for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Took up a huge portion of my life arguing this uh, a while back, and I could bring up multiple things that were done incorrectly, but um, I disagree. <laughs> Thank you. Motion. Um, I will move to approve Ordinance 1707, an ordinance, uh, so, me, 1706, an ordinance rezoning approximately 82 seven acres of land located at uh, 1210 O'Brien Avenue uh, and O'Brien Avenue right of way. Is there a second to the motion? Second for discussion. Jen. Uh, Dave, what is the legal requirement for rezoning when we annex? Is it to um, conform as closely as possible or? Well, we're governed by our growth policy and what the most equivalent zoning would be that the county has. Um, there are some instances where someone either in the time that the county had the the property changed their zoning to something else where we aren't necessarily going back to what it was when we had jurisdiction with only a couple of properties that ever happens to but um but that you know we that was previously in our jurisdiction it was zone wr2 then two years ago the county took it into their jurisdiction changed it to a county equivalent zone to our wr2 now that we've annexed it it's in the city we're just merely changing it back to what we had it for the last 20 years previously before the county had jurisdiction so thank you Further questions or discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. <clears throat> those opposed, like sign, and that motion does carry unanimously, Michelle. Which brings us on to item 7D, uh, which is ordinance 17-7, uh, rezoning approximately 0.14 acres of land located along the south side of West 19th Street in section one, Township 30 North, Range 22 West in Flathead County, from County B2A to Whitefish WB2, and adopting findings with respect to such rezone on a first reading. Dave. Uh, just a note that there uh, was an error in the packet and that staff report wasn't in there, but you should have got a copy from Michelle um, prior to the meeting. Um, yeah, this is on West 19th Street uh, along Baker Avenue. It's just a very small strip of land um, that for whatever reason was never annexed into the city. Um, the, for years it was zone B2, and when the county took it back into their jurisdiction, they changed it to county B2A. Um, because we annexed it in, we need to change it back to our WB2 um, secondary business district. It's just a 16 foot wide strip um, adjacent to the office building that's under construction there right now. So under the um, review of the findings, we are making this change in accordance with the growth policy. Um, it will help facilitate uh, safety from fire panic and other dangers. It'll be in city limits with uh, city uh, police and fire. Um, promotes public health, public safety, and general welfare. Um, facilitates adequate provision of transportation, water, sewage, schools, parks, and other public requirements. Uh, reasonable provision of adequate light and air. Has a no effect on motorized or non-motorized transportation systems. Promotes compatible urban growth. Um, we considered the character of the district and its particular suitability for the particular use because it had been previously zoned B2. Uh, conserves the value of the buildings, encourages the most appropriate use of land throughout the jurisdictional area as it's done according to our growth policy. Um, we did look at historical use patterns and recent changes and we made our recommendation, which was approval. It was uh, went before the planning board on February 16th. Um, there was no public comment. Planning board reviewed it and made a recommendation to support the staff's finding of facts uh, that it be approved. Uh, if you have any questions, be glad to answer. Thanks, Dave. Any questions for Dave? Not seeing any. We did advertise for a public hearing on what will be Ordinance 17 7. Any public comment tonight on this item? Public comment? Not seeing any. I'll close the public hearing and turn it back to the council for a motion. 
right Frank. again. Ordin I will move to approve ordinance 1707 and it's, uh, 1707 ordinance rezoning approximately 0.14 acres of land located along the south side of West 19th Street. I'll second. That motion has been seconded by Councilor Franson. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that motion carries unanimously. One more for those in the audience. We're obviously doing some general housekeeping, as you can tell from the overwhelming public comment that we're receiving. <laughs> um, we'll move on to Ordinance 17-8, an ordinance rezoning approximately 1.87 acres of land located between Lena Joy Drive, Shiloh Avenue, and the Whitefish River in Section 1, Township 30 North, Range 22 West in Flathead County, Montana, from County R3, which is their one-family residential district, to our WR1, our equivalent one-family residential district, and adopting findings with respect to such rezone on the first reading. Dave. So this particular property uh, is a storm pond owned and maintained by Montana Department <clears throat> of Transportation. Um, for whatever reason, it was never annexed into the city, and so we recently annexed it in January. Um, we're recommending approval of this zone change and we believe that it's made in accordance with the growth policy and that it does secure from safety from fire panic and other dangers promotes public health public safety and general welfare uh, facilitates adequate provision of transportation water sewage sc schools and other requirements it is a storm drain pond so that does fit in there um, Provision, reasonable provision of adequate light and air, has no effect on motorized or non-motorized transportation systems, does promote compatible urban growth, consideration of the character of the district and its particular suitability for particular uses, uh, conserves the value of buildings, even though there isn't any on the site, um, the most pr appropriate use of the land in the jurisdiction. Um, WR1 it was the zoning that it was previously. Um, and then um, historical use patterns have been reviewed Staff did recommend approval to the Whitefish Planning Board. The Planning Board reviewed that on February 16th. There was no public comment. Uh, they unanimously recommended approval to the council. Be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Dave? Not seeing any. We'll go ahead and, and open our public hearing for what will be Ordinance 17-8. Any public testimony this evening on this item? Public testimony? Not seeing any, I'll close the public hearing and turn it back to the council for a motion. Frank. I move to approve ordinance 1708, an ordinance rezoning approximately 1.87 acres of land located between Lena Joy, Lena Joy Drive and Shiloh Avenue and the Whitefish River. Second. Motion has been seconded by Councilor Franson. Uh, further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that again passes unanimously. Thanks, Dave. We'll move on to communications from our fire chief, Joe Page. Uh, we heard about this at our last meeting, which will be a consideration and consent of letter and petition to add 19 properties to the Whitefish Fire Service area. Chief Page. Good evening. I've uh, presented you a request from the fire service area to add 19 properties to their fire district. Because of our um, agreement, inter intergovernmental agreement with them, uh, it needs to be approved by the city council prior to them going to the county commissioners for final approval. The 19 properties are down on Pinnacle, just south of our rural station. Okay, any questions for Chief Page? Not seeing any, we will uh, need a motion um, approving the consent of a letter and petition to add 19 properties to the fire service area. Frank. I'll be happy to do it. Um, I would move that we uh, consent to, uh, or we need to consent to the letter uh, and petition to add 19 properties to the Whitefish service area. Second. That was seconded by Councillor uh, Williams. Further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that carries unanimously, Michelle. Thanks, Chief Page. Move on to item nine, which is consideration of an engineering contract with Robert Pesha and Associates for the Summers Avenue reconstruction project, which will be funded with resort tax revenues in 2018 fiscal year. And this is on page 259 of your packet. Good evening, right. Craig. Good evening. 
I'll spare you guys the long introduction uh, on this one, other than tell you that we're still talking about the RFP that was done late <laughs> last year. Um, and uh, at this point, this will be the sixth of seven projects that we looked at during that RFP, so we're, we're getting really close here. Um, but uh, it was the, the recommendation of the interview committee, uh, which was comprised of Karin Hilding, uh, Mayor Mulfeld and myself, that we do move forward in a negotiation with uh, Robert Pesha and Associates for the Summers Avenue project. Um, this is a project which is next on the list uh, with resort tax funds, which will reconstruct the six blocks of Summers between East 2nd and East 8th Street. Uh, the project includes complete water main replacement, uh, stormwater uh, improvements at the intersections, as well as complete curb, gutter, and roadway reconstruction. Uh, we're optimistic that we'll be able to reuse the majority um, of the sidewalk out there, although a, a complete survey will be done and um, sections of sidewalk that need to be replaced will be included. Uh, it's anticipated that we'll be bidding this project about a year from now uh, and breaking ground on it in the spring of 2018 uh, so that we can complete it during the summer months of that uh, next summer, or a year from this summer summer of 2018. Um, this first phase of engineering uh, essentially includes the preliminary engineering. Uh, it will include public outreach um, and then uh, final design. Uh, we'll move forward with a future task order to complete the engineering uh, after we finish that preliminary design and uh, public outreach. Uh, we'll follow a pretty similar schedule as we have on past projects with public outreach um, beginning this spring where um, essentially the, um, the residents will kind of see the blank canvas approach. Uh, we'll go back and do the preliminary engineering and then show them what, uh, what we've come up with in the fall. We have uh, much more constraint on this project because it is already an urban section. It already has curb and gutter and sidewalk and a number of um, older growth trees. And so um, we'll want to be very cognizant of that during the design, but also want to take into consideration um, things that the local residents uh, have seen living on that street. Uh, so based on this, the Public Works Department has negotiated with RPA uh, to complete this phase of work uh, and the Estimated total is $116,200. Uh, the fiscal year 2017 budget for this project is $300,000 for engineering design only. Um, and then we'll be carrying this, this budget forward in fiscal year 18 uh, and perhaps the first couple months of fiscal 19 as we finish it. So uh, based on these factors, it is uh, the recommendation of the Public Works Department that a motion be passed to award a contract to RPA in the amount of $116,200 to begin work on the Summers Avenue reconstruction project in accordance with the scope of work included in the staff report. Thanks, Craig. Any questions for Craig? Or can I have a motion, please? Frank, you're six for six. <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> I want you to get in a group. Um, I would move to uh, award a contract to Robert Pesha and Associates uh, in the amount not to exceed $116,200 to begin work on the Summers Avenue reconstruction project in accordance with the scope of work included in the staff report. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Seconded by Councillor Franson. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that carries unanimously, Michelle. Thanks, Craig. We'll move on to item 10. You have Adam's report and close with the packet. Any uh, questions from the council? Frank. This actually goes to both uh, you and Craig. Do we know what the cause of the water main break was? I mean, I know what happened, but what caused that to happen? Or do we have any idea? Can I take this one? Go for it. <laughs> Um, the, the break at the corner of 6th and Baker was on the T intersection uh, on the 12-inch main that goes up 6th Street. Um, it's a section of main that was installed in, in 1999, so in terms of water main, one of the newer pipes in town. I mean, we're not talking about one of our old cast iron pipes that um, are wearing out and, you know, we, we fund to replace every year. It was a newer pipe. Um, 
when we installed that pipe, we used what was called a direct connection. And those direct connections have uh, a T that basically goes over the top of the pipe with a gasket, and then a valve is installed. And you drill through the valve into the pipe so that you can basically make this connection without taking water service out. Um, it's, a, it's a very common industry standard connection to be made. Somehow during this connection though, um, either uh, at the time that it was made or shortly thereafter, there was a failure in the gasket. There's a rubber gasket that surrounds that saddle T. And there was evidence on that pipe that this gasket had been leaking for many years. Um, in fact, it was blowing out of the gasket to the point where it actually wore a hole in the PVC pipe. And at that time, um, Sunday night, uh, when that hole basically wore through the pipe, it created what's called a spiral fracture. And the entire length, that entire 20 foot stick of PVC pipe basically fractured. And so we wound up with this crack that was 20 feet in length and just emptied our entire supply of water out in a matter of about an hour and a half. And it, it was really the perfect storm of events. You know, I mean, it happened at about midnight on a Sunday. It was a 12 inch main, which is one of, you know, the larger arteries we have. And it was at one of the lowest elevations in town. And you, so you put all three of those factors together, you know, we can't get to it immediately. By the time we responded, it was only about 35 or 40 minutes by the time we had guys out there turning valves. But there was so much water coming out of this pipe that, you know, we lost our entire supply in about an hour and a half. So. Well, good job getting it corrected. I think the public outreach was exceptional and thanks Craig and Adam and, and Chuck for helping <clears throat> with that. Further comments on Adam's report? I had a, a question, Adam. So you indicate that you're still in leaseholder discussions with the retail space. Do we know when we're gonna come to some resolution on what those spaces are gonna require in terms yeah, of The realtor that we're using has reached out to both parties here in the last couple of days and just hasn't had anything back from them. Okay. Uh, there's one party that's uh, securing some funding from a local lending institution, and they expect that any day, but we've been waiting for a few days for that, so hopefully they can put that together. Um, the other party, we're just waiting on some of those, the particulars that they want uh, inside the space. So once we have that, we can kind of put that together, and that'll all kind of be part of the, the lease agreement, and okay. so hopefully we should have those should be soon. Are we still in a position where we can finish those retail spaces before we open the parking garage in City Hall, or are we starting yes. to push the timeline a little bit? No, I, I think we're still okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, could they move some guys over there to start doing a few things? Sure, but there's plenty to be done okay. around the rest of the site. Um, but, you know, I mean, obviously they want to get done by uh, mid to late April, so they do want us to let them know a few things probably within the next couple of weeks, but I suspect that we'll, we'll have that information for them. Great. Thanks. Yep. Appreciate it. Any other items to report on, Adam, between March 1st and March 6th? No, nothing significant has come up. Um, I just will reiterate what has have been said here about Chuck Stearns. Uh, he clearly knows what he's doing. He knows the community. He's got that history. That is something that I, I don't have. But uh, give me time. I'll, I'll catch on. Uh, big shoes to fill, but uh, he's doing well. So. Well, we have full confidence in your abilities, and we're here to help in any capacity, so please reach out as needed. We have the tentative FY18 budget calendar uh, from Adam. We will, I believe, require a motion adopting um, the FY18 uh, budget schedule. Um, Adam, if I'm not mistaken, isn't our first um, preliminary meeting this week, or is that next week? Uh, yeah, preliminary stuff is this week. Okay. Yep. What, can you remind me of the time? Uh, Wednesday, 8 a.m. Okay. Thanks. So we'll need a motion to that effect, adopting the FY18 uh, budget calendar. Jen. I will move to approve the FY18 budget schedule. And I'll second. Motion was seconded by Councillor Sweeney. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like, sign. And just for the record, Richard Hildner has returned. How did it go? It's great. I'll, I'll comment. Okay, Council great. Comments. Thanks for returning. 
We'll move on to item 11, which is communications from the mayor and city councilors. And we will start with what will be resolution 17-11, which is a resolution of intention indicating its intent to exclude from the city boundaries property described as Lake Park Edition, Tract 4 and Block 1, Section 26, Township 31 North, Range 22 West in Flathead County, Montana. And this was brought forward by uh, the property owner uh, for your consideration uh, this evening. Adam, is this your item? No. <laughs> Angie, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. <clears throat> um, Bruce Tate actually brought this um, petition forward to exclude um, a parcel of his property that we annexed um, in the West Lakeshore area. Um, it's on the edge of the annexation. He owns two parcels. He's um, actually asking us, um, pursuant to this um, statute, to de-annex only one parcel of it. And so I prepared the resolution, but perhaps Bruce could speak to his petition. Okay. Bruce, would you like to approach and just name an address for the record, please? Thank you. <clears throat> I haven't been talking too much in the last hour, so I'll warm up the pipes here. Uh, I'm Bruce Tate, and my wife Susan and I reside at 1800 West Lakeshore Drive uh, on the west shore of the lake here. And uh, I really do appreciate the time and consideration that the council members and the mayor showed me on an individual basis talking about this particular tract of land, which uh, is a very dubious tract and can never be built on. And uh, the only council person I was not able to connect with was Andy Fury, and he was in China. And I apologize to Andy for filling up his voicemail for six weeks, but I finally realized he must not be in the country. <clears throat> But uh, we, had, uh, we had good exchanges. Uh, I hope I answered all of your questions about the uniqueness of this particular track. And uh, hopefully it will, will fit in the overall scheme of things with my house lot with the improvements on it being the uh, north east, no, northwest end of this annexation and the lot that we own next to the house lot being excluded from the annexation. Am, am I correct in assuming there were, we did a, uh, a request that, did that get in your packets to the one that, uh, that I had done up with a little help from some others? Yeah, we have Along in front with of- the resolution that Angie yeah. had worked up we have the resolution, your letter dated February 17th, 2017, as well as uh, the map, um, Montana Code annotated references, okay. and the plot map. Excellent, so. thank you, thank you. Um, there are, there's a word change at the bottom of the official resolution here that uh, the last paragraph, whereas track four it reads may never be built and I would suggest changing that word to will never be built that's a more definite word to use there and that same change uh, from may to will on the sentence at the top of the next page and that that would be the only uh, suggested change I would make <clears throat> and if uh, if Angie has any any other changes that she feels need to be addressed, uh, please let us know, Angie. Uh, she was a great help in getting us drafted, and I appreciate her time and efforts, too. So I, I thank you all for this consideration, and, uh, and especially for your time, because I know you're all very busy. And, uh, I'm going to, with that, I'll say good night and hope for a good outcome. Thank you. Thanks very much, Bruce.
Frank. Angie, are you comfortable with those two changes? Yeah, I'm fine with those changes, Frank. Um, I'd like to move to approve res resolution 1711, a resolution of intention of indicating its intent uh, to exclude from the city's boundaries property described as Lake Park Edition, Track 4 in Block 1, Section 26, Township <coughs> 31 North, Range 22 <coughs> West, um, PPM, uh, Flathead County, Montana. I second. That was seconded by Councilor Williams. Discussion on the motion. Frank. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate um, all the work Angie did on this um, to a large degree at, <coughs> at my urging, um, or I think a number of us urging. This is a vacant, irregular shaped lot that for all intents and purposes cannot uh, be built upon. It does not require city services, will never require any city services, um, nor would it benefit from any services um, given that it's unbuildable. And therefore this is a, a truly unique piece of property um, that just happens to be on the border on the very edge of the city of Whitefish um, that I think is appropriate for us to de-annex. And so I would urge my fellow councilors to join me in approving this. Further comments or discussion? Yes. <clears throat> Jen. Does that include, does your motion include the suggested changes from May to Will? Yes. Okay. Bruce, I would just like to, to comment. I know this, this issue has been very dear to your heart and your entire family. I know you're very passionate about this and there's usually, there are two ways to handle it and I felt the way that you handled it. You were professional, very patient, understanding, and most importantly, very respectful of uh, the decision that would have to be made tonight. And I just want to let you know that I very much appreciated that. On that note, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign, and that motion carries unanimously. Thank you to your family. Any comments uh, regarding Heather Mull's uh, letter regarding uh, the city beach ordinance that we passed last week, Frank, two weeks ago, excuse me. Yeah, and I, and I will, uh, I meant to do it last week when we got this letter. Uh, John, I'll, I'll take it upon myself to write Heather back directly, but one of the things that aggravates me, and it, she's not to be faulted here, but the news coverage that we received or that was received on this particular matter it gave everybody the impression that the whitefish has gone berserk with creating new regulations and restrictions. Nothing could be further from the truth. The reality is, is that no new restrictions or ordinances or um, rules are going to be applied to the use of and at City Beach. We have, in fact, reduced the number of rules that have to be complied with down at City Beach through this process. And as for her issues with dogs, I appreciate that. I truly do. But as I understand it, dogs have been restricted and must have been on, in that beach since 19, 1916. So again, we're not making any huge news here or changes other than reconfiguring and actually reducing the number of rules and regulations down there. And I'll, I will write Heather back directly because when I, when I saw the news coverage, I knew this was coming um, and nothing could be further from the truth. So. Agreed, thanks for following up with Heather. <clears throat> you have enclosed, I believe, did we include it in the packet? We did. Um, the letter that Maria drafted um, indicating the council's support uh, for the proposed uh, rule amendments and suggested additional rules and policies uh, regarding um, prevention, detection, and containment of the spread of invasive mussels and other AIS species to Montana state waters. Maria provided me a very well-written letter. I appreciate that. And I've gone ahead and signed that letter, and I just need council approval to go ahead and submit this to Maria. I move that you submit it. Okay, thanks. Second. Show of hands. Great, thank you. Frank, how about the insurance committee? I've been all but worthless. <laughs> um, if somebody else wants to do it, fine. I've, otherwise, I'll be happy to take continue. What's the level of commitment? One meeting a year. Okay. <laughs> and they're really not needed then, but yeah. Right. Anyone else uh, vying for the position? We'll just need Anybody to- Anybody open for trades? <clears throat> no, I just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
We'll need to motion uh, to reappoint Frank to the insurance committee. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. And that's unanimous. Uh, Michelle. Um, enclosed in the packet uh, were some of the maps uh, regarding proposed changes to our urban growth boundary as a prelude to an update of the extension of services plan. Um, I think we've had time to review that map since our last uh, work session two weeks ago. Um, and we'll need some council uh, direction on those suggested changes. David, is the map that we've got that's uh, identified as page 291 of, 29, uh, of 291, I guess, um, is that the entire, is that a global map of what we're trying to include in our growth boundaries? Yes. And the follow-up map, follow maps are just blow-ups of certain sections of that, is that correct? That's correct. Mr. Mayor, what form does this policy direction need to take? Is this simply just a show of hands? Or we, um, do we need motions? What, what, what I, think, I think we generally just need uh, your input on these suggested changes to the maps, which will you know, form the basis for the update to the extension of services plan. So if you're generally comfortable with these additional um, you know, seven or eight areas, then I just believe D Dave and the planning department needs direction to that effect. And I'd appreciate that through a motion. Before you do so, I had one question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Dave, the, the southern portion, which I believe is the intersection of Highway 93 and 40, I, I apologize, but this map isn't very, uh, I can't orient myself accurately in terms of the actual boundaries and what those boundaries correspond to in terms of uh, the intersection of Highway 40 and 93. Can you explain that? It's uh, Bl where Blanchard Lake Road comes in and East Blanchard Lake Road. Okay. So it, it carries the Highway 40 corridor essentially straight west um, to meet up with Blanchard Lake Road and then where it jogs northwest and then north again is the, the Blanchard Lake, where Blanchard Lake Road turns to Carroll. There's a blow up of it on page 294. I don't know if that helps or not. It does, yeah, okay. okay. And Dave, in, in your opinion, the advantages of including that area south of Highway 40? Well, it's an area that we, we can, we have the capability to extend water and sewer to. Whether that's ever annexed or not, that'll be up to how that's developed. Um, if someone petitions, the council will have a opportunity to make decisions on annexation in the future, but I mean, this, the, the purpose of this map is to show areas that we can, in the future, um, provide services to should that be required, so. Okay, great. Direction, motion? Question. Richard. Um, Dave, in your view, does including this in our extension of services plan, this high, south of Highway 40 um, piece, does that in any way affect com or compromise uh, the city's position uh, that we may or may not take with regards to the 93 corridor study that the county is uh, initiating? You know, I don't think it directly affects that. Um, you know, the only change is, is you know, once the, because this is just, some direction the plan has to obviously go through its iterations, go through public hearings, get adopted before we change the map officially. Um, so until that happens, I mean, I don't think there's going to be any change. Once that this, you know, changes are adopted, it may, you know, change how some of that property is developed. Um, if they know that they, there's an opportunity to get on water sewer, it may develop differently than if there isn't. But I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is. Do we find ourselves starting down this path of 
of moving uh, incrementally south with extension of services um, that may be um, not in the best interest of the residents of the city of Whitefish. You know, I guess, I mean, you know, Craig could probably better answer, you know, the, the capacity of our systems, our water and sewer, and whether this would put an undue burden on the city. Um, you know, that's really a public works question more than anything. Um, but I, you know, I guess having the opportunity to annex this would allow the city to have more control over how that's developed. Um, if it's annexed, you know, things would go through architectural control, would get zoned to our zoning, we'd have more control over what, what happens there. But as far as the capacity goes, I'll let Craig answer that. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, the perceived notion, I think, has always been, well, you know, once we cross Highway 40, what's next? You know, Happy Valley. Um, as far as water capacity goes, you know, the, we know that we need additional fire flows um, in the south end of town as we continue to grow. Um, and in order to most effectively construct a water tank, we're looking for an elevation of about 3,100 feet. Um, you either need to get uh, about 1,000 feet south of Highway 40, or you need to get about uh, 3,000 feet west of Highway 93 to find that elevation. The further west you get, the further away from that key Highway 93 corridor that we're looking to serve you get. And so um, it's most economical for us, given our existing water utilities in Highway 93 um, and the, the topography south of Highway 40, to, to move those lines a little further south and, and build that storage. Um, I, you know, from a, from a growth perspective, I, I don't, I, I can't say that going south of Highway 40 uh, with our utilities is automatically going to force us to con continue going south. I think that having that ability to, um, to grow south of 40 is going to, to give us a more economically feasible way of, of building <coughs> water storage. Which we kind of proved to ourselves last week. We need. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm just a little concerned. What that by ha including this one parcel, um, if that uh, prevents us from um, some planning that we need to need to do ahead of time. And maybe this is part of it. I just I'm a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I think at this point, I, you know, approving this or recommending that we move forward with a, um, an extension of services update based on this doesn't necessarily lock us into doing it. I think what you guys would essentially be doing is recommending or um, directing staff to move forward with uh, an extension of services update based on these areas. I think until that, uh, extension of services plan is updated and approved none of this really um, is locked in and we know that the last extension of services plan went through some pretty heavy vetting you know at the state level um, and so you know I guess it's my opinion that just moving forward with it with an update based on these these recommended changes is the first step in a relatively lengthy process so I'll go ahead, go ahead and ask the question, and Angie, this might be most directed at you. You know, given the county's response to our um, request for a, a, a joint corridor study on the Highway 93 South corridor that we just received, uh, I believe, yesterday, what puts the city in the driver's seat in terms of being able to influence and control how our gateways develop, including this in our extension of services plan or not? Well, I, I'm not sure you're going to be put in the driver's seat at any point, but I think including it within your extension of services plan, you know, shows an intent that you're, you know, planning on at some point bringing, you know, those on to, or at least have the capacity to bring those on to city services. Um, leaving them out of um, your extension of services plan, I think, would be a little bit odd if you're, if you're trying to say we would like to plan for this area, but by the way, we can't serve them. You right. know, they're not even included in our extension of services plan. So while I'm not sure you'll ever be truly in the driver's seat, I think um, 
a, a passenger. Yes, you might be passenger. <laughs> if we're lucky. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Do you need a motion? I, we do need a motion, either adopting or I'll, adopting certain parcels or all of the proposed map changes. Angie, that was very helpful for me. Thank you. Um, I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, to um, extend uh, or accept the direction uh, to adopt the maps as presented uh, on the extension of services plan. Is there a second to that motion? A second. Seconded by Councillor Williams. Further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, like sign. And that's unanimous, Michelle. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Craig. And we'll move on to councilor comments. Pam, would you like to start tonight? Nothing tonight, thank you. Thanks, Pam. Richard. Several things. Chuck, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the presentation. Can you hold it up so I can see it? I, I, congratulations. <laughs> I, that's awesome. And I, two weeks ago, I mentioned uh, how much I appreciated your service to our city and to council. Uh, and. Nothing has changed in the last two weeks to change my mind. Thank you very much for your service. I really, really appreciate it. Um, the, uh, Angie, thank you for the letter to the um, study commission. And have we heard anything back from the study commission? I've not heard anything back yet. OK. Um, Craig, thank you for the water main repair. Um, it blocked my way home on the midnight flight as I drove back <laughs> into Whitefish on that Sunday. I knew something was going on, um, but I still had enough water and my wife had enough foresight to fill the coffee pot so I could have a pot of coffee in the morning. Um, but uh, thanks to you and your, your team, uh, they, they really got after it and, and I think that was a good effort. Um, where that break is in Baker, I was wondering, um, since I walk back and forth and I watch people hit that, um, the edge of that asphalt, uh, I know you have a rough road or broken pavement or sign or something. Um, I was thinking it might be a good idea to have a flasher right there just to remind people that have got forgotten in that last 50 meters that between the sign <laughs> and the break. Um, and, uh, oh, and uh, the reason I was late is what, as I had the honor of representing the uh, city um, at a, a gathering of uh, members of the clergy, uh, all, not all, but many uh, churches and clergy uh, from the valley, uh, as well as the Jewish community and 42 rabbis from um, across the nation and uh, two rabbis from uh, Canada and the city for its part in um, its stand against hate, uh, bigotry, anti-Semitism, intolerance, uh, presented the city uh, with a menorah made out of uh, Jerusalem stone uh, that um, it was a very moving uh, presentation and uh, I'll show it uh, in just a second. The purpose of this menorah uh, that was uh, do donated by the um, Jewish community uh, is really to illustrate the light uh, that uh, shines uh, on the dark corners of hate um, and intolerance and anti-Semitism and that uh, the light of the menorah uh, would uh, help extinguish uh, those um, evil and vile as aspects of, um, of hate and intolerance. Thanks, Richard. I'm assuming we can find a good place for that in the new city hall. I'm sure we can. Thanks. Katie. I would once again like to thank Chuck for all of his dedication, time, and service that he's given the city, and he will be missed. And I'm sure Adam has big shoes to fill, and he will fill them well. 
Other than that, thank you again, Craig, for all of your hard work and <laughs> the catastrophe of water, the main water main break. And I think, hope everyone has a great rest of your week. Thanks, Katie. Jen. Congratulations, Chuck, on your retirement. And I hope you have many trips ahead of you, many cycling trips. Um, and thank you again for um, how diligent you were for every single meeting we've ever had and how well prepared you were for every one of those meetings. It just makes our job so much easier. Thank you. Frank. Chuck, you've been the best. Thanks so much. Um, you did give us all very, um, I think, all councils that you served, you've given great confidence to um, with what you've been able to provide them in terms of organization, information, and perspective. So thank you so much for all of your work. Um, and with that, I have nothing further. And neither do I. Uh, anything further from staff or council? Craig. Yeah, I'll just mention, well, first of all, Chuck, I'm probably the staff member that's uh, spent the least amount of time with you, but I, I definitely don't think that's reflected in what I've gained, you know, from your professionalism and just absolute confidence in what, in what you do. And so I, I've appreciated every minute of it. Um, as for the water main break, I'm happy to take credit um, for, the, for the quick actions of the city and, and my staff. Um, and everybody that was involved, but it was completely a team effort. And that team effort was really citywide. You know, if it, if it weren't for the patients and the understanding um, of the, the residents and the business owners and all of the water users, um, it would not have gone as well as it did. Um, you know, and that really started with the folks at the North Valley Hospital that were out of water for, for several hours. You know, and when you look at what they do, um, water is obviously a very precious commodity. So um, happy to take credit for it, but it's really a, a tribute to, to this city as a whole. On that note, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.